On this episode, we explode things. For the first time in forever. Wait, we've we've done this many times before already. Oh, freaking sick. Come to think of it, this entire series has been all about explode. <laughs> Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian. New hair, new life. I don't know, we're doing bombs today. Hi. So we are, this is the advanced map tutorial and this is episode 19. All right, so uh, load, let's load the game. Right, so we've been doing bombs. We've created the visuals for the bombs, like the, the Akira dome kind of bomb. Uh, then we did animation for the bombs and we roughly can animate like the entire sequence. But today it's all about making the gameplay stuff happening. So we have a, like a list, sound effects, bomb certain enemies, bomb converting shots into power-ups and then um, we want to maybe exit the bomb earlier. This is kind of like a timing kind of thing. Let's, let's, let's put that a little bit higher up. Uh, we want to maybe have control earlier and then there's this lingering shadow bug. I want to clear this first. All right so let me let me try to reproduce the lingering shadow bug because I think I know what the problem is. I'm gonna turn down the bomb a little bit. Okay so I'm gonna use the bomb. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna kill some enemies. I'm gonna get killed. And you see, there's the shadow. What is that doing? Whoops! The shadow is changing sides. Uh, the problem is that our bomb is using this freeze frame system. You know where we have a callback and a call while. And the problem is that um, we are not resetting the call while at the end. So when we die, that is also utilizing that same system. And it's it keeps triggering the call while <laughs> for that. So um, the question is like whether we want to do it um, reset the call while here at the bomb's end, or if you want to reset it at the beginning of die. I'm going to choose it for here. So we're, um, we're going to do it something like this. So let's try this again. So I'm going to do a bomb. So I did the bomb, and now no, 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 I'm going to get killed. And you see there is no lingering shadow. So that problem is fixed. Moving on, sound effects. So, okay, I, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm not gonna recreate the sound effect live on air. I've, this is something I've been a bit struggling with, like making the sound effects work. Um, and I figured out a good one, so I'm gonna use just, just, I'm just gonna use that one. So let me see. This is the sound, this is the pickup sound. And here, I'm gonna copy and paste the sound effect that I had. Hopefully this works. It totally worked. It's a very complicated, first we have like, boom, and we have like, like clicks. So it's kind of like something like maybe uh, triggers and then we have poosh, explosion. These are the notes if you want to copy the notes yourself. But yeah, that's the idea. Um, that's going to be sound effect 62, 62. And then let's just do this. Let's just, just, just do it. SFX 62, let's go. Yes. This is good. Oh no, what happened there? All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I, did I get killed right after using the bomb? Was that, was that what happened? It's also weird that I'm blinking while I'm using the bomb. That's weird. We should, we should, yeah. See, this should should not happen. Let's 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 write this down. In invul bomb interaction. Because the thing is, I actually want the bomb to have invul. Um, uh, so iframes. I want the bomb to actually have um, trigger some iframes. So we actually want to have the iframes. We're gonna think about this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> exit bomb earlier is something I want to do next. So right now, when I use the bomb, I have to wait for the entire bomb to disappear before I can continue moving. And I would love to be able to do that earlier. So what I want to do here is... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here, bomb phase number three. I actually looked up uh, what I figured out in my prototypes. And I figured out, like, like I want to stay... I want to fade out for 14 frames. 
I want to fade the bump out for 14 frames. Then I want to relinquish control to the player, but I want to continue fading out afterwards. Hmm, that's a little bit tricky, right? So let me let me show you what I what how does how did how did it work? So we have this countdown timer, bump T, and I'm gonna when I go to phase three, I wanna set bump T to zero. Uh, and then here it's counting up, that's good. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna count again down to bump T is greater uh, or equals 14, right? And if that happens, uh, we reset the freeze to zero, that should trigger bump end. And now what will happen is the bump will stay on the screen. Or, or just disappear. Oh yeah, it disappears because because then we, we reset everything here, right? But we actually don't want to reset this anymore, right? So we're gonna do something like this. Right, so now the bomb stays. So now what I want to do is I want this part here, this part here, I want this to be triggering post post bomb, right? So for this, I maybe I will trigger, um, I will put this in its own function, function fade bomb. And I want to get this stuff out. And then here we're going to go fade bomb. <clears throat> Something like this, right? And then here in update function, well, first of all, let's see if that works. That works, but now the bomb is obviously not fading, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to fade bomb in the update function as well. So something like, something like, uh, I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's do something like fade bomb. Yeah, but not just fade bomb. We're gonna go. We're gonna do it because we don't want you fading when there is no nothing happening. So how about um, if bomb rd is if that's greater than zero, then. So if there's still some dome happening, we're gonna fade it out. There is one problem that I have with that. And that is when that, that fading is when that's, when that's finished, then the shadow still might, like this shadow will be still, still drawn to the screen. It's gonna be like a very big shadow, right? So um, something we might do here is we're gonna do like a test here. So if bomb RD, it's, it's maybe not necessary, so I'm gonna mark it with a, with a star. But if bump RD, if that's uh, smaller than zero, then um, bump RS, we're gonna set it to zero as well. Um, just so we're not drawing it anymore. And it still works the same. Yeah, and it feels a lot better. And then okay, I can now Actually, I might actually make the speed. It feels a little bit sluggish. The bomb feels a little bit sluggish. See how the, how it's a little bit fading out, a little bit sluggish. Um, let's put it like this. Uh, what's a, what? What's with zero? I like uh, two point five maybe, and then we had at zero point one. So now this needs to be multiplied by less. That's better. Okay, this is good. So now we have like this bubble that, that expands and then collapses itself. This looks a little bit, by the way, uh, this looks a little bit like an underwater explosion and the water explosion also like this. You, you get like this bubble and then the bu bubble collapses on, up on, on itself. So I, I kind of like this. Yeah, this is this is done. This is donezies. So now we're also ex exiting the bomb earlier. Now we go come to the part where the bomb is actually hurting enemies. So this is gonna be happening here in a bomb end, right? This is, this is where we're gonna start hurting enemies. So we just need to just loop through all of the enemies and see if they are in the range of the bomb. Now this also makes me kind of uh, consider one thing. We don't, like we kind of hard coded the range of the bomb to be 40, right? I want to maybe have like, um, 
I want to maybe specify the bomb range. When I bomb, I want to maybe have bigger or smaller bombs. I won't be able to tweak this. That's something definitely you want to do in a prototyping. Maybe if you figure out the correct range for the bomb, maybe you don't need that anymore. But for now, we definitely want to maybe have a bomb range. So let me just um, put it something like range and then bomb, bomb range equals range or 40 something like this right so if we specify a range <coughs> we're gonna get a bomb of that range but otherwise it's gonna default to 40 and now here when we have 40 that's the bomb range we can paste it in here by the way something I don't like this code and this code is the same Ooh, yikes but yeah what what can you do right but now we have the range of the bomb or now we have this saved in, into a variable so now we can go like for e in all enemies do right so we're gonna is it enemies yeah it's enemies now here's the thing when we do the enemies in the update function right here's where we we're doing damage to the enemies right here we're colliding and then then we're setting to do, okay, we're gonna to wanna to delete this. And then, because the enemy doesn't, shouldn't just delete, get deleted immediately, we add particles. Oh no, we're not, not adding particles, that's a hit hit effect. Uh, then we're making sure that if, that's actually where we're doing damage. And here is where we're checking if the enemy is already dead, and if it's dead, then we're doing stuff. So here's one important thing. There's going to be a function. I think you should create a function that does damage to the enemy and then also checks if the enemy is already dead. And then if it's dead, then it does the, all the stuff that was supposed to happen when an enemy dies, like spawning pickups and so forth. Because now, for the first time, for the first time in forever, we have two different ways of killing an enemy. Before that, we could only shoot it, so we just could have like, put it in here. But now we can hit it with a bomb and we can hit it with a shot so it makes sense to take this stuff out and put it like in a universal uh, function that can be referenced by different types of damage now actually I don't really sure there's probably not gonna be any other damages right yeah but still right so let's create um let's create a function damage or hit enemy e dmg Something like this, right? So this will hit an enemy and, and do damage to them, right? And then here in a gameplay, instead of this, we go hit enemy e dot the uh, uh, e comma shot dmg. Now all this stuff I'm gonna copy out. And I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna put it in here. If s dot y, so we don't need to check for the dead zone. We uh, assuming that the, because the dead zone should, or I think the dead zone should, dead zone should only apply to the shots. It shouldn't apply to the bombs. I think it's fine if you like bomb something on the top of the screen, then it, it will get blown up. I think it's always a bit disappointing when you, when you bomb something and it doesn't explode. So um, we're gonna go e dot hp minus dmg. It's fine to flash the enemy. That's okay. And then if e that's I'm sorry, my my cell phone is, is ringing. And then if the hp is goes down and we're spawning the pick, we're getting the score. We're deleting the enemy from the list. We're exploding it. Everything is cool. And then here's the bullet canceling happening. All right. All right. All right. And then end, and we forgot some ends. There's one th more thing that I, I, because I know that this was a problem with my, my playtesting. See, we can delete this now. Oh yeah, has hit, that's good. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has hit thing is a bit of an ish, um, because that means, we, this is kind of like a little thing that we created here to make sure that per frame we only trigger, because, because we, a shot might hit multiple enemies, might hit multiple things in a frame. Uh, and in order not to spam, uh, we we want not to spam the the sound channels. We want to make sure that we only trigger the sound effect if there was if we only trigger it once, not once per enemy, right? And then what something that we can do here is so we're gonna do all these checks. 
uh, oh, wait a minute, where, where is it? This is an if, this is an if, this is an if, okay. So I think this is the, the yeah, this is the check for if the cancel has, has happened, uh, if, the, if the enemy is dead. And if the enemy is dead, we're gonna return true and then return false, right? So we'll, it returns true if, if the enemy is dead. And then we can do has hit equals this this way. We are, uh, wait a minute. So wait, false means that it hasn't hit or we can just do the not in here or not hit enemy, right? So because the hit enemy returns when, when, the, when there is a death that happened and we want Mm, we want the hazard to be true if the enemy was hit but did not explode. Um, right, so if not, so if it's if it not exploded, then it's going to be true and okay. And if it's true, then it doesn't matter what happens there because that's an or. Okay, I think we, I think we got it. But there's one more thing that I want to make sure. Okay, I know this is good. Um, but there's one more thing that I want to be sure. It's a little bit bad that this is kind of like off to the side. It's a little bit difficult to read, but okay. Um, here's the problem. We are looping through all of the enemies and then within each enemy, we're looping through all of the shots, right? And if an enemy has been hit and destroyed, we are still in the loop that checks for collision between that enemy and the shots. So what can happen and what did happen in my playtesting is that an enemy has been hit that's been already dead. And that's obviously not good. So uh, something I need to do is I wanna make sure that I flag an enemy as, as being dead. So if, so if e call shot and not s del me and a e dot hp is greater than zero and there is a collision. <laughs> Making sure all of these checks before we check the collision because the collision is actually the most difficult thing to check against. Right, so now if we drop below zero, um, then we're not doing the collision check anymore. Um, the problem is that in playtesting, what happened is then um, we had enemies spawning multiple pickups when they got shot down because they were hit by multiple shots in the frame that they would die. And I, it was very difficult to debug this. <laughs> okay, no, this is good. Uh, let us Let us try this. Okay, so things are exploding. This is, this is perfect. Okay, so this is cool. Now I want to actually get, because I didn't do that yet, I want to actually get the enemies get hit by, by the bomb. So that's gonna be a dist, right? We, we, I always have to check if we have the dist. Dist, yeah, yeah, there is. So for um, if dist between um, bomb X and bomb Y, or, or bomb X and bomb Y, and e dot x and e dot y, if that is smaller than bomb range. So the distance between the center of the enemy and the, the center of the bomb is smaller than bomb range, then uh, hit enemy e comma yeah, hundred. I don't know. We have to figure out what the good damage for the for the enemy for the stuff is. And this time we're not worried that we're gonna have to hit the same enemy multiple times because uh, uh, each enemy is only be being checked against one. So now we can explode. Yes! Oh, now we have like this double explosion because the enemy is exploding after the bomb exploding, but that's correct. <laughs> oh, this is already good. Sometimes the the bomb is uh, not the sound of the bomb is not triggering, but that's because we, are, we have very busy sound channels. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so I checked some of the, the values that I had previously in a prototype because that's something that I can't derive. I mean, I could derive here on camera, but it will take a while. So let me paste in some values that I derived in prototype. So on bomb end, I want to add a little bit of a 
padding around the bomb. I want the bomb to be hitting things that don't quite seem as if they would be hitting. Because the thing is, the bomb uh, checks um, against the center of the bomb and the center of the of the enemy. But the enemy is bigger, right? So it, the bomb might be kind of already overlapping the enemy, but it wouldn't look as if the enemy, like the enemy wouldn't be still hit, right? It would be kind of partially, uh, uh, you know, hit, touched by the bomb, but it wouldn't get hit. That's a bit annoying. So what I want to do is I want to add eight to the bomb range. Just add a little bit of a padding to the bomb range. So the bomb is a little bit more generous, right? So that's very important. Next, I want to uh, set Inval to 60. I want to get, give me some iframes after the bomb was triggered, so like I don't get hit immediately afterwards by a, by a bullet or something like this. That's kind of, I think, very important. And then I want to loop through all of... I want to actually delete all of the bullets. So uh, for B in all bullets... And here's the problem. Oh no, I put the enemy in particles? Oh, I'm sorry. For everybody who's shouting at the screen, I'm sorry. I wanted to put it in a different... I was wondering why the explode was on top. I want to put the hit enemy here, at the very top of the gameplay. This is going to be a very important function right now for us. And uh, here's something that, uh, that, that is very important. This stuff, this deletes a bullet and adds a little schwave. So I kind of want to have that. But the problem is, like, we are, this is like 31 tokens, so now we have to repeat 31 tokens. So let's create a, uh, a uh, function that deletes a bullet. Uh, let's do it in particles. I think in particles it's, it's fine. Function uh, del bull. Mm, like this, right? So we're gonna double the B, the, the B. Boop. And that allows us to also double all of the balls in here. So now the bomb will actually clear the screen. I mean, we get iframes and we killed it. all the bullets on the screen. It did not work. I think it's called balls. See, now they've been all cleared. I would maybe do this even. I would maybe even do this even. Uh, here, where we're transitioning to phase number three. It feels correct for this to be happening in the transition to phase number three, because right now the bullets pop and you don't know why. Uh, and I think it might make sense if we do this now. Yeah. Oh, although... See, now the... the... <laughs> okay, so now we have this problem that the particle animation happens after... Like, there's no particle an animation happening while the, the bomb is an being animated. So what I want to actually do here... <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but it makes sense. Do parts. Don't we have a do parts? Do part. We don't have, we have do part. We don't have do part. How many times do we do a single particle? Do we do have do parts? Oh, yeah, it's the one that, yeah. Yeah, I think we need to do this. We have to, we have to do, do parts. We have to make do parts. Do parts. Oh no! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. That, that allows us to simplify this part here. So we just do. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a set. Okay. Uh, do parts. Do parts. Do parts. Do parts. Okay, now we have to change do parts into do parts. So right now the particle function only does a single particle, but now we want to change it for... Ah, but the problem is we do like a return end here, right? Oof, yikes. Okay, we can figure this in a second. So for 
P in all parts. Two. And then we're going to go here and. Right. So do we have a return? We have here a return end. And all this stuff is otherwise good. So it's really just because of this one here. So the problem is that if the p dot h is smaller or equal to zero, then we're not doing anything. So we're going to go if p h is greater than zero, then. And now comes the actual particle code. And then we're going to put everything into like a huge n. Then statement. Like this. Easy peasy. See, and now that this allows us to, to do parts while the boat. First of all, let's see if particles are even working. Well, it seems they're working. They seem fine. The particles are fine. Oh, freaking sick. Oh, this is good. <laughs> this is good stuff. Well, technically, I mean, the part, the bullets could be also cleared when the explosion triggers ends. Because actually, if you think about it, the, the enemies also explode a little bit delayed now. But, but it's fine, it's fine. So now the, the bullets get cleared before enemies get explode. But I kind of like when it's a little bit split out. Because the there's this shockwave coming out and that, that kind of feels like it's maybe... It makes sense if the things that are happening far away from the explosion, if that happens earlier when the shockwave is flying across the screen. And if this, uh, the actual damage that is being done to enemies is that's happened when when the actual little bubble collapses. Okay, good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. What else do we need? Bomb hurting enemies. Yes. Bomb converting shots. All right. So as a reminder, what this means. Uh, so the bomb should convert shots into power ups, and the power ups should then fly out of the bomb. And uh, we kind of want to see the shots get gradually converted into power-ups. We want to, as the shadow at the beginning, of, as, as, as this is growing, we want to see those star, uh, shots get converted into stars. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> um, but first, let me think about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's something I also want to... The standard range for the bomb, I'm going to increase it to 60 because I wrote down that this is actually the range I had in my prototypes. Yeah, this looks, looks just a lot more useful. Uh, it, you still have to position yourself a little bit. You cannot, like, kill all of the enemies on the entire screen, but it's just, like, far less far less of a useful bomb. Previously, the bomb was a little bit anemic. That's also, by the way, uh, a feedback that I received from... From prototyping that you want to like tune the size of the bomb the bomb should feel useful you shouldn't be have to like point blank the enemy to to actually trigger the bomb okay so that's good and now next thing we want to do the thing where the shockwave as it's growing that is converting the um the pickups into into uh hmm. now i'm thinking about this because man right so um we are going to do as the shadow is growing, we're gonna go do four uh, S in, oh wait, four B in all bulls do on every single frame. And then we're gonna go if dist uh, bomb X bomb Y and B dot X B dot Y. If that is smaller than bomb RS um, or bomb RD, it doesn't really matter. If that's smaller than bomb RS, uh, then uh, okay. So if this is happening, if we if the 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 bullet is in range of the bomb. Where first we're gonna... I wonder if we can just use this Del Bull thing. Del Bull. Yeah, let's go, let's go with Del Bull. Why not? Why not? After all, why not? All right, so now I'm gonna spawn the pickup and we're gonna, for that we're gonna use the spawn pick function. Where is it? Gameplay, spawn pick. There we go, we're just right here. So we need to get this all out and we're just gonna use this to spawn our little pickup. You will see there is gonna be a problem here. 
Don't, don't you worry about that. We're going to talk about this problem in a second. So we're deleting the bullet, respawning the pickup at b.x and b.y. Pnum is going to be just one. Um, and the p star is going to be absolutely true. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to see what happens. Just let's see what happens. The stars, it, it, it totally works. It totally works. Why does it work so good? All oh, right, because we're not updating, we're not doing any pickup animations while the bomb is running. So the pickups fly out. They exist on the screen, but they do not age. And they only fly out after the bomb actually explodes. And now we can use the bomb to kind of harvest stars. That's very satisfying. <laughs> ah, yes. That's that feeling again. All right, there's one more thing that I, I kind of want to maybe do. So if bomb phase is, I'm gonna, because it's, it's like this, you see, we are spawning the pickups in the range, but the range is still growing in phase number two, right? There's still a bit of after grow happening while the, the dome is coming down. So now what I want to maybe do here is I want to maybe combine those things. So something like bomb phase is, smaller or equals two, right? We're gonna combine these things. Let's see how this works. And then if bomb face equals one and bomb T, then we're gonna set it to two. And then we're gonna go if bomb face equals two within this, then, <clears throat> and then here, we are going to do the stuff that is about the bomb dome, right? So it's a little bit of a com more complicated setup, but we are reusing, right? So this will now cover bomb phase one and two. Uh, th this allows us to reuse this code, right? Um, because we would otherwise have to duplicate this co code. And then we're gonna say like, okay, if this is half true, then we advance the bomb phase two. And then let's do this at the end. So we get an additional frame out of it because that otherwise changes the timing like this. And this deletes all of the bullets, but that only happens <coughs> after we converted the bullets into into, into, uh, into stars. Ah, oh, this is so good. Uh, I have to say the magnetic force is a little bit too strong now. I set it to very strong. To, um, so it's easier to pick up the bullets, but actually I don't want it to maybe to be that strong. Um, so let me see. Yeah, there we go. So the magnetic force here, I want to set it down a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So mm, in fact, let us do a little bit of a pass, a little bit of a pass on top of our pickups because the way they work is kind of like a little bit not quite the way I want them to work. First of all, I think it's a little bit too easy to pick up the pickups right now regularly pickups because they just they get all get sucked into the ship right they just like there's like no skill no skill they just all fly and also because they're flying from far away they sometimes can even orbit the ship and then that's also something that I'm ugh, ugh, shames them. So what I want to do now is I want to remove this part here. So the pickups are just not going to get attracted magnetically at all for now. At least not when you get close. Instead, I want to like keep this distance 32. I think that's okay. And also now I want to make it so that because the problem is like if you kill the enemies from close range, you kind of like pick up the pickup immediately, right? Because you're so close to the enemy, the pickup flies out, but you pick it up immediately because you're close enough to pick up the pickup. I want the pickup to be flying out and I want to chase after the pickup. I don't want to be to immediately suck in the pickup, right? So what we want to do is actually want to have a, a cool down on the pickups, uh, so to speak. So we want the pickups for a couple of frames, for a couple of frames, we want the pickups to be 
um, to be not pick up a bull after they have been spawned, right? So we're gonna go like cool equals five. Five frames is something I figured out was cool. And then uh, when we do picks, when we do do, do picks, uh, this pick up a bull thing, right? And by the way, we might not have to save the distance here, but anyway, so this part here, we're gonna go like if, p dot cool is greater than zero then p dot cool is smaller than uh, minus equal one else and then we're gonna do the this check this distance check right otherwise the pickups are not really interested are just cooling down man they're just like chilling out and then we're not saving the distance in the... We, I decided differently. We're just gonna do like an immediate check here. Right, so they are just like hanging out, doing nothing. And we only let them at, we get attracted by the... by um, Or we only let the player pick up the pickups after they uh, existed for a couple of frames. So let me first see if, if this, this works. So I want to now I want to wait for the players to come closer. I'm gonna shoot in from here, and you can see now the bomb, the the pickups fly out, but I don't pick them up immediately. This is what I want. Oh, you see, there is also a problem that I noticed. The the um, pickups are can be off screen, so let me write this also down. That's something we're gonna do later. Off screen. Uh, I don't want to be flying the sideways of the screen. I think that's frustrating. Um, okay, and now I want to I want to rework. I want to bring back in the magnetic force. It's P magnet, right? So what I want to do now is when we're fading out this bomb, and when the fading out has finished, P in all picks. Do. P dot magnet, magnet equals true. So after when the dome disappears, but only when the dome disappears, we, we can maybe move around still, but when the dome disappears, then I want to activate the magnetic force. I don't want to activate the magnetic force in the moment when the explosion has finished because the pickups will be flying out and we might be doing fun, funky stuff. But I want to activate a little bit, a little bit, a couple of frames later. So like here, I didn't see what happened. Yes, see now, activating the bomb still has that kind of like mag magnetic pull, but it comes a little bit later. So it's a little bit, we, we give the pickups a little bit more opportunity to fly away. So it's a little bit clearer. So they, they not return immediately to you, but they return later. And also this gives you, this like, using the bomb will now also... Will now also bring in other pickups possibly that are maybe already on the screen. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. So we have now a bomb is successfully converting shots. In a prototype, I had this thing where the pickups were turning like into shadows. I did, I'm I, I, now developing this, I didn't miss that effect. So maybe we're gonna just leave it as it is because it just adds a bunch of tokens and I don't think it changes much. But for now, I want to also um, do this. So when the bomb starts, I want to invol to be actually zero. I want the invol to go down to zero because we're gonna kind of like reset the in invol afterwards, right? Uh, because I don't like the, this idea that when I use the bomb after I got hit, that I'm sh uh, that I'm blinking while while the bomb is happening. Also, can we do it so that uh, this that this white flash thing that it's affecting the f flames as well? Yeah, that should that should be happening. Come on, man. I want the, the flames because it looks a bit odd that we have like this little blue thing. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, so now it's no longer flashing. The involved uh, iframes are reset. 
when we trigger the bomb. So we're not flashing while the bomb is being triggered. The, I have to say the pickups are a little distracting from the beautiful bomb animation that we created. But, you know, you win so many, you lose so many. Whatever. <laughs> this already feels so good and juicy. <laughs> Doesn't that feel nice? It does feel so good. But uh, we, I'm going to put some stuff on the on our list. Uh, damage values? Question mark. <laughs> there is like, ooh. <laughs> we haven't dealt with any of the gameplay stuff at all. So we have to. So yeah, there, we have a, like a big gameplay gameplay pass uh coming up that is definitely something we have to do but not today that is something we do on the next episode thank you so much and a huge shout out to the beautiful people on coffee.com who are supporting this show who are making this show possible by donating by subscribing to this channel on coffee thank you so much for your support i will also uh, read out a question uh, this is from Martin Christopher, and this is not exactly directed to LazyDev, this was just like a post on Mastodon. I don't really understand what logic is going on in the minds of people who make color palace for video games that consist only of five colors. Maybe I don't understand what they mean by the word palette. There is probably logic, but they don't explain it. And also, I think there are only two articles that every site keeps copying. I don't know what two articles he's referring to, uh, but um, Martin Christopher was on, on Mastodon some time ago and he was going on and he was complaining about, or very frustrated about, um, colors. I want to maybe do a post a bit about it at some point, like like really do, like doing some art basics. Um, but generally, there's like two major reasons three major reasons why you want to have a color palette. First major reason, very straightforward, uh, old school games only have very few colors, right? So this has to do with hardware limitations and so forth. So you want to imitate the look of our old hardware, you want to have few colors. So off the bat, uh, a very simple reason. Here's a more complicated, more sophisticated reason. And I'm gonna finish up with a very simple reason at the end. So the second reason, the more sophisticated reason is that generally having few colors, generally having few colors um, makes the entire image more consistent, more visually consistent. Everything fits more together as if it belongs together because you keep repeating the same things. It's kind of like the same mentality with music, right? Like most of the music doesn't use all of the keys on the keyboard. That would be insane, right? <laughs> Just like insane chaotic music. What you instead do, you pick like a key, right? You decide for a bunch of keys on the keyboard and to decide that these are kind of like things that you'll be working with. You limit yourself from the, all the possibilities that are possible because they are just overwhelming to just a few and you want to make sure that the few that you pick are kind of like working together, creating some kind of vibe together, right? And you might be thinking like, oh, that's completely unnatural. In real life, I see all of the colors, but that's not actually true. When you are in the forest, you see mostly green. When you are out at sea, you see grays and blues, right? At any given point, you certain colors will dominate in the environment you are in. You will also see that movies will also grade their image, right? Whatever the camera has filmed, right? They will still put some grading on top of it to reduce the amount of colors that are visible to just a certain few that work well together, that create a certain vibe, a certain scene, to make the scene more coherent, more visually palpable. So there's a lot of really good artistic reasons to limit yourself to just a few colors. But finally, the third reason why I think you should limit yourself to just a few colors, and that is kind of like very important when you're beginning out, when you have just a few colors, then there's far less mistakes that you can make. There is like this crayon mentality that newcomers come into where just like they just use all of the colors and they make chaotic images and the look and vibe of the image kind of like spiral out of control of them and they're very frustrated because ah, I use all of the colors and it just looks like a mess. But just saying like, okay, I'm just gonna use these three colors makes you focus less on colors, on using colors as a mean to communicate ideas 
but more on shapes, more on silhouettes, more on perspective, shadows, contrast, these kinds of things. These things are way more important to express, to visually communicate the ideas to people than, you know, picking the right color, than making sure that you pick blue to communicate water, you know. Water is expressed not by the color blue, but all these other things that I mentioned. This is why I also think that especially Pico 8 is such a good tool, because it's good. it has very few colors, right? So it actually teaches you a lot about pixel art, about art in general. You just have just very few colors to work with, and that pushes you into interesting decision making. It really challenges you to expand your abilities. Anyway, a little bit of rant about colors. I probably will do a video about art, pixel art, and art in general at some point. Anyway, so these were gameplay uh, related to uh, explosions, but next time around we're gonna do gameplay overall. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.